I call the order regular meeting of the President and Board of Trustees of McChesney Park, Illinois for Monday, July 18, 2016. Please stand for invocation led by Pastor Heath Tippett, First Baptist Church in McChesney Park, and Pledge of Allegiance led by Trustee Beck. Uh, before we have the invocation, let us take a, a few minutes of silence for the officers that were killed in Dallas and also Baton Rouge. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that when our country is in turmoil and difficult times, that you continue to be a God who is in complete control and understanding of what's going on around us. Father, we thank you for our public servants, especially those who keep us safe on the streets and in our homes. We thank you for how they demonstrate a Christ-like sacrificial love, protecting people that sometimes they don't even know. Lift up the families of those that are left behind by these brave officers. And Father, we pray that you would just show them how much they are loved. We pray for those serving right here in our own community. Let us never forget those people that are getting up and sacrificing time with their family and putting their lives on the line for people they don't know. Father, I continue to pray that you would give wisdom and guidance to the leadership within our village. We thank you so much for the opportunity to live in a nation where we have the chance to govern ourselves. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk take a roll call, please? Mayor Boland. Here. Trustee Snodgrass. Here. Johnson. Here. Jed. Here. Wilson's absent. Bailey. Here. Beck. Here. Clerk is present. The attorney is present. Thank you, Lori. We have a quorum. Next is approval of minutes from July 5th, 2016 board meeting and the minutes from July 5th, 2016 public hearing for the I-90 Route 173 uh, business district. I entertain a motion to approve. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussions or changes? I see none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes have been approved. Next we have Treasurer's Report. Tom Yo. Thank you, Your Honor. Tonight's Treasurer's Report reflects the total of all funds as of July 11 at $8,973,787.38. Also, in complying with our ordinance, we are providing you with a monthly pledge collateral report. And as of July 13, 2016, the village is holding funds in four financial institutions with FDIC coverage. The total pledge collateral is currently 123% of the current balance, which exceeds the 110% requirement. As always, a detailed copy of the treasurer's report is available on the table at the back of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or changes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The treasurer's report has been accepted. Next we have communications. Clerk Lori Mitchell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, this evening we have a couple people that wish to speak uh, in reference to I have to look at the ordinance number. Ordinance number 3116, the zoning map amendment from R1 to R2 at uh, 601 Wayne Drive. Uh, first, Mr. Bill St uh, Steve Stivers, uh, 609 Wayne Drive. If you'll approach the podium, please. Uh, do you want to uh, do the directions for speaking? Yeah. That you normally do so in three minutes. Uh, just state your name and address and please keep your comments to three minutes, please. William Starvers, I live at 609 Wayne Drive in Chesney Park. Um, I had a couple questions about the rezoning of the property. One, 
um, how many units were going to go in there and uh, what type of units were they? Sir, your uh, comments are to address the the chairman of the committee and uh, if uh, you have questions, you can meet with a staff member after the meeting. Okay. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about were, I, I spent 20 years in the Marine Corps as a military police, so I'm, I'm pretty traversed in the, uh, the dealings with people when you get them in too close to confines. Uh, right now in our neighborhood we have virtually no crime. Uh, I can't remember the last time a police officer had to come to a call in our, crime, in our, uh, in our neighborhood. But I have dealt with a lot of uh, Marines in barracks and people in barracks or in, in duplexes and stuff and base housing. And probably 75% of our calls were at situations in those areas, not so much single family homes uh, where they were living in the same areas but in single family homes. And I think one of the reasons is because they're not so confined with each other. They have a little bit of buffer room between them. So they, if, if one person's playing the music loud, the other person's not a subject to it because they have a little bit of room you know, for the music or whatever to dissipate. Uh, it's been my experience that when you start putting too many people, like in a duplex or something where they have common walls, that there's more, more uh, people upset because of what their neighbor's doing, things like that. Hence, police get called and you have problems with the neighborhood. Also, all my neighbors have been there for a long time, and the dealings I've had with rental properties is people are in and out all the time. Um, sometimes they stay there, sometimes they're good. I'm not saying everybody that rents a place is bad. I'm not saying all that all duplexes are bad. More often than not that I've dealt with them, though, that's been the case. People are in and out, and right now I could probably leave my garage door, and I have several times all night long and nothing's come up missing. I would be afraid to do that if there was a duplex two houses down from me, uh, that I don't know the people that move in and out of there. Uh, also, I had a, a question, and obviously you can't answer this either, was on parking, what kind of load that's going to put on our on the street, if it's street parking or if it's in the, you know, if they're going to have a parking lot. I understand the par the lot has been split into two lots now. It is a double lot, and I just plan, does that mean that there are going to be two duplexes there, or, or what? There's a lot of questions that nobody's ever asked or answered. If you'd like to talk to a staff member tomorrow, that would be great. Okay. Well, tomorrow's going to be too late, isn't it? Are you guys voting on it tonight? This is a, an uh, ordinance, and it requires two readings. Okay. So it'll be uh, tonight and uh, in two weeks. Okay. And the other problem uh, I've had with areas I've been researching online and stuff, that every time a duplex moves into a neighborhood, uh, a single-family neighborhood, property value gets <coughs> dropped because of the, of the uh, duplex coming in. And I, I'd really hate to see that, that happen. Along with, I keep, in the other meeting, the zoning meeting I went to, they were talking about uh, the fabric of the community and it'd be a good buffer zone between the commercial on along North 2nd Street there and the R1 neighborhood behind that. I, I don't understand all that, how, how that would possibly work because there's, the, although the main street is commercial, there's all residential houses there. It's not like there's businesses there and then we need a buffer between us and, and the businesses. So I, I don't understand where they're saying that, and I don't see where it would help the fabric our, of our community if, if everybody uh, is getting along now the way it is. I have no, no problem with them if they want to build two houses there and sell them or something like that where there's a little more room, you know, buffer room between them so we wouldn't have a problem with it. I have no problem with, with anything like that, but I'm, I'm opposed to having any kind of duplex or multifamily unit there. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks. And we have another individual to speak, Margie Mullins, uh, regarding the same ordinance. Uh, please state your name and address. Keep your comments to three minutes, please. Margie Mullins, 605 Wayne Drive, McChesney Park. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak tonight. I agree with a lot of what Bill just said up here. The one thing that I would like to say is that my daughter and I own the home right next to this empty lot. It was a single family home before the fire. Um, it was a rented home, but we don't really want a multifamily, two family, multifamily going into that spot. It was a single family home. We'd like to keep it a single family uh, home that goes back up in there. Thank you very much for giving me your time. Thank you. 
And Cindy Slaybaugh is here um, if there are any questions of the petitioner. Trustee Beck, um, would you, would you come to the podium, please? State your name and address. No. My name is Cindy Slaybaugh. I live at 8686 Caradale Drive, Caledonia, okay. Illinois. No. Uh, my question is, the empty lot that's adjoining this wedge-shaped lot, mm -hmm. is your intent to keep that as a single-family residence, yes. residential lot, to build yes. on eventually, or to keep blank for a while? Uh, we were planning on putting a single family on that lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, so has. one single family and one duplex, duplex. is yes. what the plan is right now? Yes. Both lots exceed the minimum requirement for a duplex lot in the village of McChesney, but because of trying to respect the neighbors, we kept one as a single family and decided the other one could be used as a duplex and make a nice buffer between the R3 to the west of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we probably shouldn't have okay. the uh, <coughs> discussion uh, went on during a planning and zoning commission, so I appreciate you being here, Cindy. Thank you. With all fair, hold on a minute. With all fair, ma'am, come back to the podium. With all fairness to everybody here, first of all, this communication that's going back and forth here should not be happening at this board level. This should have been done at planning and zoning as everybody in this room knows that. So there's no excuses for this going on now. But since it has started, I will recognize Trustee Johnson who had his hand up. Thank, thank you, Honor. Uh, one quick question. You have, uh, you could put three single families there. Would it be possible? It would be difficult with the frontage. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so uh, also this evening, uh, the village is pleased to announce the winners of the July Yards of Distinction program. They are District 1, the Shoal Residence, 5296 Red Tail Drive. District 2, the Jurassic Residence, 12432 Harbor Oaks Drive. District 3, the Barrick Barrick Men Residence, 1320 Gladys Drive. District 4, the Huff Residence, 9920 Shore Drive. District 5, the Dujovic Residence, 1276 Ed's Place. District 6, the Singer Hammond Residence, 915 Evans Avenue. And the business yard of distinction is Superior Joining Technologies, 1260 Turret Drive. And that's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Lord. Uh, next, we have the warrants. Trustee Beck. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this evening, the Administration and Finance Committee met and approved warrants totaling $588,778.27. And I move for their passage. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. I have a second. Is there any discussion or changes? I see none. Would a clerk take roll call, please? Trustee Snodgrass. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kidd. Aye. Wilson is absent. Bailey. Aye. Beck. Aye. Five ayes, no nays, and one absent. Thank you, Lori. The warrants have been approved. Next, we have administrative reports. I'd just like to report that. Uh, Friends of McChesney Park nonprofit organization are pre is presenting the third annual Family Fest this coming Saturday, July the 23rd. The location is 8702 North 2nd or out in front of Town Center in front of the OJC Penny area. It starts at 1 p.m. with Gateway Performing Arts. Uh, 2.20, there's a talent show. 4.30, Southern Outcast Band. Uh, 550 Gina Meeks, 640 Epiphany Band, and then at 745 Shattered Picks uh, finishes off the night uh, and ends at 9 p.m. 
Next we have village engineer Chris Dopkins. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll update the board on projects that are going on throughout the village. The Kingsley Drexel improvements, there's been a lot of busy work, which is rather time consuming taking place on Kingsley. Uh, the contractor's been in removing curb and gutter, sidewalk, and pavement. Um, we've replaced some of the curb and gutter already. The contractor's also been insulating water services to help prevent those from freezing in the winter months, uh, making sanitary district point repairs and doing some exploratory digs as well as removal and replacement of some of the inlet boxes. Um, over the next week or a couple weeks, uh, the contractor will continue the inlet removal and replacement on Kingsley between Illinois 251 and 4th, and they will be insulating water services in Drexel between Illinois 251 and Elkhorn, and later this week they're going to start the mainline storm sewer work beginning at uh, Elkhorn and Drexel intersection continuing east. That will start mid to late week and that will consume them for a couple of weeks. On the Scott Huron improvements, the storm sewer is 95% complete. We had two crews on site today to lower water mains at Huron and Mildred and Scott and Huron to make way for the final storm sewer improvements, which will be complete tomorrow. Uh, the contractors also cored out Scott between Bunting and Roosevelt, as well as Bunting, and uh, we'll finish out the core out of the site in the next couple of days. Um, curb crews right now are scheduled to be in midweek to start setting string line. And our first curb pour is actually set for this Friday, weather permitting this week. Wednesday is looking a little rainy, so we make it set a day behind. But overall, the contractor is making very good progress. Prairie Dorothea, the, uh, we've conducted the pre-construction meeting with the contractor, uh, executed uh, shop drawings and reviewed shop drawings. We're executing the contracts. Uh, both NICOR and Commonwealth Edison have relocations. Uh, the contractor prefers to wait for NICOR to relocate, and we think that's a very good idea, given where NICOR is. Um, they're supposed to start on Thursday of this week. They estimate about two weeks for relocation. Once they're started at the site, we'll schedule the resident meeting and, and have that meeting and then uh, get the contractor underway. Uh, the 2016 pavement maintenance program, contractors returned contracts to us, so we'll schedule the pre-construction meeting and, and go through the submittal reviews here in the next week. We'll also send out the postcard to all the affected residents, letting them know what's going to happen in their front of their house here in the next week or two. And then finally, on the Alpine Path, uh, we were delayed a couple of weeks, of course, because of the state budget. Um, we have a provision in the contract where we'd like to have the work done in Harlem High School on the east side of Alpine Road in general. Uh, most of that work takes place between Men's Drive and Gladys Drive uh, prior to school beginning, which is August 15th. That's uh, kind of a tall order now. However, we met with the contractor numerous times last week, went through the logistics. We think we still got a pretty good chance of getting that done prior to school beginning. Um, the contractors are uh, awaiting their bonds to submit to the state. Once those are in, the state will issue a notice to proceed, which should occur either uh, tomorrow or Wednesday. Contractors planning to be on the site on July 25th. Uh, we'll start work on the east side of Alpine Drive down by Men's. Um, we'll issue a press release before work starts because there's going to be daily closures of the outside lanes on um, Alpine Road once they're underway. So those closures will get lifted um, by about 3.30 in the afternoon in order to keep capacity on Alpine Road for the PM peak hour. And that's all I have this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, next we have Public Safety Supervisor Sergeant Doug Bushman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the bi-monthly police report covers July 1 through the 14th. There were 1,024 calls for service, 276 reports taken, 201 arrests. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Bushman. Next we have committee and trustee reports. Do we have any reports this evening? Trustee Beck. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This evening the Administration Finance Committee vet and re reviewed warrants. And also, we met and uh, set forward uh, a resolution to allow for a hearing for the Prairie Lane Dorothea Property Exchange. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Beck. Uh, Trustee Bailey. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to remind the community that Gigi's Playhouse is having their lemonade stand this Friday and Saturday. I believe the one in McChesney Park is on Friday from 10 to 1, but you could always call and get times. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bailey. Uh, Trustee Johnson. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to thank the Public Works and Ted Hunter for their great job of maintaining the flowers on 251. That's just uh, quite, a, quite a pretty sight. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Johnson. Are there any more reports this evening? I see none. 
Uh, next, we have the consent agenda. Will the staff please present all items under the consent agenda for the record, please? Tonight's consent agenda consists of item A, ordinance 3016, an ordinance granting a variance to construct a six foot high fence in the front yard at 150 Landing Gear Drive. Item B, resolution 43R16, resolution fixing the time and place for a public hearing on the proposed exchange of real estate and authorizing the execution of an exchange agreement. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Tim. I want to point out Ordinance 30-16 is for first reading. Are there any items a board member would like to remove from the consent agenda as, and considered separately? I see none. The consent agenda is accepted as presented. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would the clerk take roll call, please? Trustee Johnson. Aye. Kidd. Aye. Bailey. Aye. Beck. Aye. Snodgrass. Aye. Mayor Boland. Aye. Six ayes, no nays, and one absent. Thank you, Lori. The consent agenda has been approved. <laughs> Next, we have new business, Ordinance 31-16, the zoning map amendment for R1 to R2 at 601 Wayne Drive for first reading. I entertain a motion to approve. So made. Second. I have a motion and a second. Staff report, please. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Uh, the petitioner owns, um, uh, that's here for us tonight for review, is uh, one of two lots owned by the petitioner. Um, the west lot that adjoins uh, existing residential property is, is adjoining properties that are zoned R3, which is a multifamily designation which allows more than one dwelling unit uh, on each of those lots. Um, the petitioner is proposing to construct a duplex on their property um, with two dwelling units. The parking, um, they'll have to provide um, two parking spaces for each dwelling unit off street um, as required by ordinance. Um, the, the zoning classification of, of going from R1 to R2 in this case um, is appropriate uh, in light of the fact that it is a transitional zone. R2 is really made to transition properties between R3 zoning and R1 zoning. Uh, the location of this zoning classification would be appropriate based upon that. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, did review the request and had a 7-0 unanimous denial. And the uh, Planning and Economic Development Committee did vote uh, unanimously, almost unanimously, I believe, uh, to approve the request or, and make a recommendation positively. That's all I have. Thank you, James. Is there any discussion from the trustees? Trustee Johnson. Uh, thank you, Honor. Uh, Hearing what the residents are saying, I cannot support this uh, tonight. Thank you. Trustee Snodgrass. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I've had the privilege to be working on Wayne Drive for the last month. My daughter owns a home on Wayne Drive. And the homes on Wayne Drive are lovely. 80% of them are just beautiful and well taken care of. So I, too, will not be supporting this. I, I can see a single family definitely going in there to go along with the other properties in that area. Thank you, Trustee Snodgrass. Trustee Kidd. I was able to speak with several residents over two weeks ago and this week. Um, I kind of walked the street and um, I did not meet anybody that was in favor for a duplex. I do like the slave ball family and in a democracy, I think it's important we listen to the will of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Kidd. Uh, Trustee Beck. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, since this is my district, uh, uh, it's, I'm kind of torn between two, two, two things. First of all, the, the, the citizens that I represent, but also uh, a uh, developer who has a, uh, a proposed plan on the table to be able to utilize their property in a proper manner, or in a manner that would suit. Uh, if you look at the master plan, uh, the master plan shows all the properties on North Seconds to be multifamily, which could mean you could have you know, somebody could buy up three or four of those homes and build a, a, a 16 family home on, on there. I guess my, my thought is, what do we really want? Do we want to have a 16 family next door to us or do we want to have a duplex next door to us? A duplex is a 
a logical step from multifamily down to single family homes and therefore I'm going to change my vote from last week and vote in favor of this uh, petitioner. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Buck. Are there any more comments? I see none. Uh, what a Will clerk take roll call, please? Trustee Kidd. Nay. Bailey. Aye. Beck. Aye. Snodgrass. Nay. Johnson. Nay. Mayor Bolin. Nay. Two ayes, four nays, one absent. Thank you, Lori. Ordinance 31 16 has failed motion for first reading. Uh, next, we have public comment. Is there anyone who wishes to make public comment? I see none. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, you might note for the folks who think it might be coming back for right. second reading that because it failed at first reading, it does not come back for a second reading. Okay. I thought that would be an appropriate uh, okay. Did you hear what Attorney Green said? Repeat it. Attorney Green? Uh, because it failed at first reading, it does not come back for a second reading. It's done. Is there any public comment? I see none. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Go ahead. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned.